Slippery Rock is just such a great town. It's a cool area for rock climbing, <laughs> boating, <laughs> swimming, and hiking along McConnell's Mills. <laughs> Really, anything that um, people want to do outside-wise, it's all literally within 5 to 15 minutes away from here. It looks awesome! Fifty miles north of Pittsburgh, you'll find Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania, population 3,086. Well, this beautiful town is home to verdant scenery, celebrated breweries, and a babbling brook, it's also home to the largest gathering of medieval arts and culture anywhere in the world. Welcome to Pensacland, a place where ancient metal forging, madrigal songs, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and a fierce battle for kingdom supremacy are all just a stone's throw from the interstate. I'm Dylan Thurge, reporting for Alice Obscura, and this is Small Town Big Story. <laughs> Pensick is kind of like its own city. Ah, oh, it's so hard to describe because there's so much to it. Pensick is pure magic. It's, it's the highlight of my summer. If you want to actually try living in the shoes of, of a medieval person, the Pensick War is the best place in the world to do it. Slippery Rock is a beautiful little town in western Pennsylvania. It's got incredible nature, it's got hikes, it's got great breweries, historic sites, and then for a certain part of the year, it's all of that and the biggest medieval battle you will find anywhere on the planet. This place is enormous. Yes, yep. it is. What is this? <laughs> what are we, what is, is, where are we? This is Pensick. The name is based on the Roman Punic Wars uh -huh. and the fact that it's based in Pennsylvania. It started in Berkeley, started very, very small, has grown to 20 kingdoms over the entire globe. Do you have to be part of a kingdom? Yes. Where you live determines which kingdom you're part of. I'm in New York State. That would make that me would part be of the kingdom of the East. I'd be fighting over here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much anything that you would want to do in a medieval sense, you can do here. We are members of the Border Watch of Ethelmark. We're situated on the border between Ethelmark and the Mid-Realm. So we consider ourselves the guardians of this end of the kingdom. My real modern name is R.J. Wood, and my Penzik name is Baron Rothbjorn Lothbrok. Lothbrok is, a, is an actual famous Viking name. It means hairy pants, and my friends thought that'd be a funny name, and they actually gifted me a pair of faux fur pants. My name is Emily, but spelled E-M-I-L-I-E, -I -I -E, but I've also been nicknamed the Honey Badger. She's only been training for several months, but she's aggressive and she's got her whole heart into it. You can look up videos of Honey Badgers on YouTube and they fight groups of lions and they don't have a care in the world. Ad Gorium! Ethelmark! So, you grew up in the area. I did. My parents would drive me by so I could watch from the road. Okay. You know, we didn't really know what was going on, but I, I love watching the suits of armor. Is there a relationship between this and the community? Yeah, there, there absolutely is. I mean, there's, we get 10,000 uh, visitors coming in. It's really a boon to the community. Uh, yeah. The Pensic War, it's a battle mainly between the East Kingdom and the Mid Kingdom. Slippery Rock is part of the kingdom of Ethelmark, so this is our, our local grounds we're fighting the Pensick War on for our own front yard. Who are you and, and where are we? Well, Bob and Jody, we are at the North Country Brewing Company Tap Room in Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. So you've been brewing here now for over 10-ish 10, years? Yeah, or 11 so? years, yeah. Sipperuk has some cool history. It was a full town established in 1803, I believe. Our building location was the county morgue for a bit. It served funerals from 1850 to 1972. When people come to visit our pub, we have trail maps. There's a couple loop trails. Jennings Nature Preserve, literally five minutes down the road. You could ride your bike from Sipperuk to a bike trail that goes right around Moraine Lake. George Washington used that trail, came right through here on his way to Fort LaBeouf. The whole town, it's a blend of business community and Ciprock University community. It's just uh, full of artists and full of good stores for antiques and everything. We've seen more Pensick people come downtown, making a destination as part of their Pensick experience. 
Maybe you could tell me a little bit about the, the Pensick Wars. I feel it's amazing that people come worldwide. We always love seeing uh, guests come in. The Pensick people in their garb are eating at the pub, you know, and it's just like, it really brings it back to an old world tavern feel. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, so You're they actually, the they back. add to the whole experience for everybody, you know, they really do. That's yeah. cool. Dylan, I'm sure you noticed at the Penzik War, everybody walks around with their own mug. I did notice this. Yeah, your mug kind of becomes an extension of your persona, so I wanted to make sure you had a good one. I know you have a Scandinavian heritage, and I assume that's where your persona might go. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got a, a bear on there, which was a, a fierce right. animal that lived, Predator that lived in, in the Scandinavia. North. <laughs> yeah, and uh, famous Viking warriors would often wear bear cloaks to invoke the power of the bear. I didn't know that. So yeah, that's that's where the word berserk comes from. It means bear shirt. Does it really? Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. The bridge battle, there are five bridges and they're they're made out of hay bales. And we're trying to keep control of the middle of them and they'll have, you know, the army of the east on one side and the army of the mid on the other. And you, we both come charging in to fight over the initial clash. And then, of course, if you fall over the hay bales, you've fallen into the water and you're done for the fight. Everything we do is on the honor system. You want to be honest that your opponent hit you. Was it a good shot or not? Oh! Stays up. Keep it tight. Keep it together. It's kind of different whenever you're a lady and you're a part of work. I think a lot of people view it as intimidating. I view it as a challenge. I might look like a tiny little lady, but I will definitely come at you with fury. And if I get knocked down, I'm gonna come right back. No if, ands, or buts. Whenever I'm out there fighting and I'm charging towards the army, my heart is racing, my adrenaline's up. You can't be distracted. You can't be thinking about work. You're focused 100% on what's happening at the moment. It never gets old. It's, it's fun every time. So the Pensick Wars, there's all the battles, but there's like a huge marketplace where every medieval craft is here. I'm making a belt, and it's called the Open Face War because the pattern is in the strings. How long have you been doing this here? About 20 years. We make knives, swords, axes. You know, if it's stabby, slashy, smashy, any kind of persuasion like that, yeah. I, I pretty much dig it. Awesome. So should I take it out like this? Okay. And then I'm gonna go just about an inch, you said? Yep, get it in there. All right, take it out. out. Well, that's ruined. And uh, you owe me $1,700. No, I'm okay. just kidding. <laughs> Ooh, these are nice <laughs> axes. <laughs> the Pensick Independent is a small, limited-run newspaper. You're the, the queen king, of Atlantia? The kingdom that's of a, Atlantia. That's a big kingdom. Yes, it's Maryland, D.C., Virginia, North yeah. Carolina, I, South Carolina, and North Augusta. My first Pensick was in 1978. And I've been to every Penzik since then, and I don't plan to miss any if I can help it. I have a local choir. It's called the Barony March of the Debatable Lands. I think that if you talk to people, you'll find that they're all very inclined towards learning and feel like we are part of not so much the actual Middle Ages, because those were brutal, but the Middle Ages as more like the way the Victorians dreamed it, that it was pretty and, and everybody was noble and gracious and courteous. And we try to recreate the courtesy and chivalry of that piece of the Middle Ages. So have you done any singing at all? Not even in like elementary school? Not really. No? I mean, no, not really. Not in any kind of like organized fashion ever. No. Well, this will be an adventure. Yeah, 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 <laughs> <laughs> for both of us. All right, so now um, we're gonna start. Mm, that's your note right there. It's probably lower than you want to be. 
<laughs> sing, sing, there it is. You got it. So, okay, so the the song goes sing, coo, coo, noo, sing, coo, coo, again. Sing, coo, coo. Now you keep going. Sing, coo, good. Sing, coo, coo. Blow with seed and blow with meat and sing the word on you. It's really hard to understand the scale and complexity of what is going on here until you get here. And then suddenly you, it dawns on you that there are 10,000 people here, every single one of whom is not some spectator, but dedicated to participating in this event in a million different ways. It tells you something that a lot of the people we talk to, it's, they say, oh, how long have you been coming? Six years. 10 years, 25 years. And that's just because it's like an infinite ocean to swim in. Sing, coo, sing, coo, sing, coo, sing, Dylan has come and asked me to train him in fighting, so we're gonna put him in a loner suit of armor, set him up with a sword and a shield. I'm gonna train him how to fight, and I'm hoping maybe if, if my training's good enough, Dylan can, uh, can have a fight and test his mettle. One of the first big hurdles in learning to fight is just getting used to wearing armor. This is a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, so this is a, a suit of armor. It is a, an appropriate kit for a, a Viking Varangian. All right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it feels good. Now let's put your spanging helm on. Yes. This is a this is a, a type Dude, of helmet. This thing weighs a yeah. ton. <laughs> here's a shield. Sheesh. And here's your sword. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, people running this? Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, it takes a, it takes a while to get used to just moving an armor. It's kind of the first issue in learning to train. Yeah, because you know it's kind of like putting your winter coat on. Forty pounds here. Forty pounds of stuff. Yeah. The second big hurdle is us often learning how to how to hit another person. So an important thing to remember when you're training is you want your you want your shots to aim for my body. A lot of people when they're new, they'll come in and throw right at your shield. Right. They don't know what to do. Right. And then if you just throw at my shield, I never have to move it. Yeah. Go ahead. Ready? Yep. Perfect. The shield takes up a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> also, yeah, get your breath, because... Uh, exhausting. Yeah. Who am I fighting? Emily. <laughs> ah, Emily. Yeah, it's going to be a, a good test. Is there a combat ground that we go to? Yeah, I think uh, I think the most opportune place would be do it in the castle, so... That seems like the yep. right place to have it. Go an, over there and, and meet medieval. Emily for the test of your skills. Medieval battle. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone here has like a Pensic name. I'm going with one that's easy. My last name has a little bit of a medieval flair to it. Uh, Turas is how it's pronounced in Norwegian. It means something like of the mountain or Thor's mountain, tu Turas. So I'm going with Turas and I live in, I live in a valley. So Turas of the valley, that's my, that's my Pensic name, Turas. Turas of the Valley. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not tough enough to say it with a straight face yet, but Turas. Turas of the Valley. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm Are ready. Are you sure? I'm not sure. Fighters, at your ready. At your leisure, lay on. Oh my god.
got it so hard. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. It's a workout. Yeah. <laughs> I think the reason that people come here, I think the reason they love it, I think it's a place where people are really accepting. I, not everybody wants to talk to you about your interest in medieval history. Not everyone wants to get really into how to do metalworking. But like here you have a community of people who are gonna be excited, they're gonna be interested, and there'll probably be some expert who they're gonna say, oh, you wanna do this thing? You wanna make helmets? You gotta go talk to this person. At the end of the Penzik War, I'll miss it. You go back to your normal life and you, you wish you were back there. The group of people that I camp with, they're almost like family. We call it chosen family. And I have had things that happened in my life. Like I lost my husband in 2005 when my children were six and nine. And I would never have gotten through it without the friends who came to support me and help me for many years. Border Watch for me is a family that I've never had. Mm. And I've never had so many friends that accept me as me. And you know, they kind of collect all the odd ducks and, yeah. and take them in. And, train them to be fighters or point them in the direction of whatever their interests are and yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What a nice thing to find. Yeah, it's it's rare. For me, it's everyone there works together so well. You and find it's, your crew. Yeah, 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 my family. Yeah. In a way, this is a story of two towns. It's the story of Slippery Rock, this little town in western Pennsylvania with beautiful forests and rafting and hiking. And then it's the story of this other town that, that pops up in this beautiful environment where the world's largest medieval war takes place, where people come from all over the planet to celebrate what it is that they love about themselves and, and find people who share those passions. So whatever brings you to Slippery Rock, whether it's the nature or medieval combat, you will find something here that is just incredible. Mm -hmm.